Hello everyone and hope you're having a great day. Today I have a really quick tip that I think is going to really speed up the workflow of everyone. So we know how this goes, right? We, we usually have um, a cloner with a bunch of clones and if we want to change one of the clones or, or some of them, uh, the usual method is to select the cloner, uh, make a MoGraph selection, for example this one, and now we have a selection tag right here. And if we want to hide that clone or exchange it for this cylinder, we will have to go to MoGraph and hide select it. Now, this is an option that um, I think it was available from R17. Uh, I might be mistaken by that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's not in every single um, cinema version. So, but anyways, what this does is just it creates a plane effector with the MoGraph selection tag added to it so it's now hiding the the clone right so if we want to have the the cylinder in this same clone we need we would need to duplicate the clone exchange it for the cube and then we can go into the mograph selection of this new cloner and invert the selection and now we have the same thing um you know the clones with that that different clone in the same uh position the problem with this is, you know, that we're creating two cloners and we have to now take into account the, both of them. So if we want to, for example, uh, let's say go into one of them and change uh, something in here or, for example, yeah, uh, the, the separation between the clones, the other one's not going to follow. And there's uh, Expresso uh, solutions that we can have for that, but I'm going to show you an easier uh, what I think it's an easier way to handle this. So if we let's get let's take this cloner out and let's get rid of this and that. So if we have the the two objects inside the cloner, uh, we usually get um, this result, right? But what we want is to able to be able to control where we see the cylinder. So what we need to do is um, with the cloner selected, we can go into MoGraph effectors and get a shader effector. And if we go into the parameters, we need to, uh, we don't want the scale, but we do want to um, just use the modify clone here. And as you can see, once I go past 50, um, it changes to the second clone to the cylinder. And we need something to drive the shader effector. So we're going to use a gradient. And as you can see here, some we're, we're already getting some results. It's actually doing the color as well. Um, but if we go back here, we can say color mode off so that the color is not affected. And if we get our, um, our gradient here, we can actually control. If I, if I start moving this up, uh, slider watch what happens to the clones you can actually start to control which clones are being affected by what and now this uh, this random or you know random selection is happening because of the selection here in the parameters of, of this slider here I'm not really sure why um, after the 50% range it changes but I usually just go all the way up and now it's a black and white selection, right? So if we go back to the shading and what I like to do is um, set the interpolation to none. So that's, you know, it, there's, there's no um, gradient in between the selections. And this is where it becomes really powerful because if I add, if I add more colors here, I can actually, you know, control where the uh, the exchange is happening and you can do this with many different things in the hierarchy right if we have uh, the cylinder the cone and the cube and we go back to to our gradient we can actually see that we are changing the the clones and look at look how fast I can just you know make changes I can actually keep uh, an extra clone in here that I may not use and if I did if I decide at some point that I really do need to use it I can just change the uh, position in the hierarchy and everything's gonna follow 
and I think if we go back to linear, yeah, we can actually start to interpolate between all three clones. So the way that this is working is a visual representation of this black to white or grayscale values. And it, it actually works if, if you keep adding more. Um, well, first of all, if, if I move this here, let me just uh, show this here. If I move this now, everything's going to follow. So, so that shows how efficient this method is. And if we keep adding more clones to this, let me just uh, make this a little bit smaller real quick. And maybe, yeah, there. If I keep adding more clones, I can actually, right, right now it's interpolating in between all of them. Um, but if, if I keep adding more clones and let's say we go to non-interpolation, right now it's interpolating, it's going from black to white. There's no in between. So it, so we're cloning or it's only taking the first and the last clone. So black to white. Um, but if I introduce another knot here, for example, and use one of the grayscale values, this is where it gets um, really interesting because we can really dial down or dial in how you know which clone we want to see represented here. So it's just a matter of uh, experimenting um, with the different interpolations of the, of the gradient and you know with the the positions in the hierarchy too. Now let me show you a real world example. Uh, so the idea here is to create a chain and the last link of the chain is going to be this uh, this kind of a, of a hook thing, right? So let's do this pretty quickly. If we go to MoGraph and I'm holding Alt to make uh, that link a child of the cloner and I'm gonna use object and we're gonna clone to this spline. Sorry, this spline here and then we can rotate the link so that it follows and let's set this to uniform now I'm setting the spline to uniform so that the uh, it knows how to interpolate in between them in between the links and we need to do this here like that and if I go to we can do a we can use a step effector right to control the rotation if we go if we go in into like a really high setting it gives us kind of the we need to go really really high there we go and now if i get this um end here it's gonna do this of course but now that we know the trick we can get a MoGraph shader effector, uncheck the scale, modify clone all the way up, and we get a gradient in there. Oh, and we need to remember to set the color mode to off so that it's not affected by the, the color. We set our interpolation to none. And if I get a little bit more space here, now we have a chain that is actually going to follow my spline. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys on the next one.